it's uh, Mr. David Trumphack is there, yes? We live in a world in constant motion, on land, on seas, in the air. We're never at rest. We need to know where we're going, to stay in contact along the way, and to bring a little bit of home with us. At KVH, we enable that mobile world. We guide people on the move. We allow them to do things they never thought possible. And we make sure they're in constant touch. We design, manufacture, deliver, and service every KVH product taking total responsibility for our customer success. All with a dedication to the most elegant solutions and to total dependability. KVH, innovation that enables a mobile world. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Are you David. Coming through now? Yes, you're coming through loud and clear. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for, for attending this briefing today. And thank you to the organizers for arranging the opportunity to, to address the Cyprus shipping community uh, now that we unfortunately can't be here in, in person. Um, I would like to start off by looking at the, the growing trend in the maritime industry towards digitalization and the adoption of maritime VSAT. Uh, VSAT adoption has been growing steadily for several years. In this presentation, I'll talk about some of the th primary reasons why this is. Uh, but first, I wanted to address the fact that the current COVID-19 global pandemic has actually increased uh, or accelerated the pace of, of VSAT ad adoption as we see it. We saw the demand for connectivity increase sharply at the start of the pandemic because vessels realized uh, how critical the need for communication was. Um, COVID, according to experts, is also increasing the demand for IoT and the connected ship. Uh, people like Euroconsult says that the, the COVID may become the catalyst for smart shipping and automation of vessels as they now see the value of remote monitoring, for example. Um, as we see it, there are three big reasons or main reasons that VSAT adoption is accelerating. Number one, focus on crew welfare. Uh, the number two one is benefits of IoT. And number three is the ever-growing need for fast data. You can say that number three has perhaps always been the main driver of VSAT adoption, which is not something new, but uh, certainly accelerating. Whereas number one and two have also uh, been there have now certainly become more relevant due to the COVID crisis. So let's start with the, the focus on crew welfare. We see field seafare well-being uh, and known to be uh, to be known to play a fundamental role in safe and assist in efficient operations of the ship. And therefore there is an increased focus on crew welfare. At the same time, seafarer well-being is, is increasingly fostered by digital solutions, um, particularly connectivity and content delivered to the vessels by satellite communications providers. Indeed, much of the onboard data usage today is actually by the crew trying to stay in touch with their family and friends at home. Um, during this period right now of unprecedented challenges, seafarers are more than ever trying to stay informed about the events of the world, trying to stay up on top of the situation at home. And whether this is by crew calling or email or internet access, seafarers are relying on connectivity. As much as 80% of the onboard data use is typically by crew, as we hear from experts. The shipping in, oh, excuse me. The shipping industry overall is facing a new reality as they see how much of their data plan is going to seafarers' welfare use. And they are understanding the order that in order to get the, and keep the best crew, they need to offer internet access. I can't remember exactly the, the order of it, but in the, the Seafarer Happiness Index, I believe that the internet and connectivity was right up there after uh, health and, and salary, uh, basically. So it's, it's really a top priority for them. 
But in these couple of, of graphs here, you see information from several industry resources, uh, and you can see that an average seafarer would spend two to four hours online per day. So not much unlike uh, everyone else at home, at shore. Uh, you also see that 75% uh, of seafarers will only work for a ship with good internet connection. <clears throat> In addition to the importance of connectivity, uh, crew welfare is also by providing news and entertainment content for seafarers. Access to news from home, current movies, TV shows, sports coverage, all of these things can have a huge positive impact on the seafarer's morale. Uh, but there are challenges in providing these kinds of content to a vessel at sea. For example, uh, KVH for decades has delivered DVDs with movies when uh, ships were in ports. But this presents big logistical problems. And it also means that movies and TV shows were not very timely when they finally get to the vessel. It certainly doesn't work for TV news, which really isn't that interesting one or two days after they've been there. But with the event of, uh, advent of, of satellite communications on board, many seafarers are now trying to download movies and TV shows and sporting events and news using the vessel's internet access. But this does create big problems in how much data is consumed or in slowing down the network for the actual primary use of, of operational uh, data. So this also brings a security risk if, if seafarers are well, not uh, well. First of all, if they're downloading content from movies and stuff like that from unreliable websites, but also if they try to bring it from home on USB sticks and such and plug it into the vessel networks. Uh, to be able to provide news and entertainment content uh, to improve welfare, the best solution is for vessel operators to subscribe to a package of licensed content that's delivered via satellite but does not interfere with the vessel's data plan. KVH offers this type of service with our digital suite of uh, news and movies, TV and sports content called KVH Link. Now, this is a business we've been in for, for more than 60 years, so we are, we are absolute, absolute experts at licensing content that's relevant to seafarers. And now with our patented uh, content delivery technology, we also offer the ability for fleet operators uh, to send their own corporate videos to all the vessels in their fleet using a, a new service called KVH Your Link. Uh, I'd like to spotlight uh, spotlight uh, KVH Your Link service for a moment because it's been putting to put to good use during uh, the recent COVID crisis. In July 2020, as crew change crisis were becoming more and more intense, Pacific Basin uh, came to us and asked if we could transmit a video to all of their 116 vessels at the same time. The video contained the crucial information from PB's fleet director on the topic of crew changes. And we were able to send the videos in one afternoon so that all seafarers heard from the fleet director. And Pacific Basin has actually gone on to send two more videos and has signed up to do more because they feel this is such an important part of their crew welfare approach, uh, as you see here from uh, their fleet director, Mr. Pillai. Pacific Basin uses uh, KV Jolling to send a video quickly to all our ships and seafarers simultaneously in an effective way. It's an effective way for our company to get an important and heartfelt message out directly to our colleagues at sea. So very, uh, very, uh, worthy course for using technology to, to things like that. So, uh, to him. The second reason uh, I mentioned was uh, the benefits of maritime IoT. Uh, IoT allows machine to machine transfer of data from onboard sensors to shore for analysis, for troubleshooting and for remote expert involvement. Uh, all in the pursuit of, of vessel performance optimization. Maritime IoT is accelerating because of the focus on vessel performance and operational efficiency. And again, COVID has accelerated the pace uh, as vessels have seen firsthand the benefits, the benefits of, of remote monitoring. Here's how uh, IoT works as, as it most, at its most basic. Uh, sensors on the vessel's equipment emit data. We've just seen a presentation with uh, fantastic examples of that. And that data is fed into programs for analysis. Here's why maritime IoT is desirable. 
It enables the use of smart chip applications for risk minimization, for performance optimization, for condition monitoring, and for preventive maintenance. The first three of those may have been on the radar for quite some time already, but especially the last one with the uh, preventive maintenance um, has been seen, seen a significant boost recently due to the difficulties of traveling to and from the vessels. The more that can be done remotely, the better, as both time and money is saved this way. But VSAT connectivity is needed for best use of maritime IoT to be possible. Although IoT is familiar to many vessel operators who undertake some form of remote equipment monitoring or performance optimization, many of the current instances of IoT take place once the vessel has reached port and is able to transfer the entire voyage data feed onto to the cloud computers to, for the on, onshore experts to, to access. The hidden power and the real value of IoT, however, is the ability to gain actionable insight during the deep sea portion of the ship's voyage as well, rather than waiting until the vessel is in port. At its most beneficial, maritime IoT will enable remote intervention for vessels at sea by connecting them real time with experts on shore. That takes VSAT connectivity for high speed, high resolution video conference. That takes uh, VSAT connectivity to solve uh, that critical issue at sea. For operators, maritime IoT can actually create uh, competitive advantages. Given that many maritime business models are already well established, the first vessel operators that make the best use of IoT will see their businesses transformed and will gain a competitive edge. To do so, vessels need reliable and fast global VSAT connectivity, as well as a way to securely connect in real time with onshore experts who can provide the remote interventions to solve problems. Um, everything from sending a software patch to troubleshooting uh, an equipment failure here and now. With so many potential benefits of IoT for the maritime industry, KVH has developed a suite of maritime IoT solutions, uh, KVH Watch for the maritime equipment manufacturers, for the shipbuilders and the software companies, and uh, what we brand as IoT Inside for vessels using KVH as their main connectivity solution. Uh, a little bit more on each. KVH Watch is our IoT connectivity as a service solution where uh, an IoT, well, where a, a maritime equipment manufacturer can put a dedicated and isolated cyber secure antenna system on the vessel and have access to it 24-7, 365 uh, for remote monitoring and for the ability to on-demand remote expert interventions. And this is all isolated from the vessel's network completely. So cyber secure by birth. KVH IoT Inside is a feature of our HTS series antennas, and it provides a benefit directly to the vessel operators who can use the dual channels configuration to run an unlimited channel with sensor data flow for things such as remote equipment monitoring and vessel tracking. And at the same time, they can run a high-speed channel for onboard functions such as crew welfare. Um, so, so that uh, is actually built into our HTS systems from, from delivery. One maritime IoT example I'd like to spotlight here, it involves KVH and Kongsberg Digital. Uh, our KVH watch service provides connectivity for Kongsberg's vessel in inside infrastructure, uh, which is available, available from their Cognify marketplace. Customers can cost efficiently capture and aggregate quality data from their assets and securely transfer them to the cloud. Several months ago, we worked with Kongsberg to install um, our KVH watch antenna system on the Simrad Echo, uh, a Norwegian research, research vessel owned and operated by Kongsberg. For this pilot program, KVH watch and Bessel Insight uh, are providing an integrated infrastructure for the IoT connectivity and Bessel to cloud data uh, transfer. Simrad Echo is relying on Bessel Insight to, to monitor their main and auxiliary systems on the vessel and help ensure 100% availability. For example, Consberg's uh, mapping cloud application will move high resolution echo sound data from the vessel to shore in real time 
so that shore-based experts can provide analysis to optimize the vessel operations. Map Mapping Cloud is particularly data intensive, so having these set connectivity is, is actually vital. Uh, as Kongsberg Digital's Senior Vice President noted, while Vessel Insight works as an infrastructure for accessing contextualized quality data from a fleet or a vessel, KVH is providing an alternative for IoT connectivity that enables transfer of data from ship to shell, ship, ship to cloud. Uh, and this pilot program is still ongoing. The third and, and last reason I want to touch upon is the need for fast uh, data. Uh, DSAT adoption is accelerating because of that. Fast, reliable, uninterrupted connectivity is required on vessels today for numerous reasons beyond crew welfare. The many onboard functions that are vital to operational efficiency all rely on fast data speeds. Downloading the latest navigational charts or using the onboard servers for connection to shore, meeting rent regulatory mandates, uh, these are just a few of the reasons. Also, if the vessel wants to enhance the chances of getting and keeping best seafarers, it needs high connectivity, high speed internet connectivity on board. Some of the applications you could say where, where data speed is most important is such as uh, telemedicine calls, uh, vital to seafarers' health at sea, or to support video conferencing in general, uh, as this is becoming a regular thing on vessels now for business meetings, just as we're all experiencing in our offices our home offices, as I might say, these days. Um, as a quick refresher for everybody uh, about VSAT connectivity, we need to mention that high-speed or high-throughput satellite technology is the factor that is making the high-speed revolution possible. Unlike uh, legacy VSAT or legacy satellite constellations that were made up of uh, satellites that transmitted over wide beams, Today's HTS constellations use spot beams that are arrayed in a multi-layered redundant pattern to provide seamless connectivity. HTS satellites enable KU-band antennas to deliver data speeds that far exceed uh, legacy L-band systems. For example, KVH's 1 meter KU-band antenna system delivers uh, speeds as fast as 20 megabits per second, uh, downlink and 3 megabits uplink. This is in contrast to L-band systems where top speeds are typically around 400 kilobits per second. Although most recently we've seen the Iridium Circus upgrade to, to achieve actually 700 kilobits per second. In the recent years, the thousands of legacy L-band systems have switched uh, over to VSAT and we expect uh, that trend to continue in, in the coming years. So why are vessels switching to VSAT? Basically, it's because commercial vessels today need more bandwidth and speed than L-band can provide. Uh, vessels are using upwards of 80 gigabytes per month in many cases, and VSAT is more cost-effective in terms of connectivity and provides a broader pool of available bandwidth for vessels. In addition, VSAT is designed for always-on 24-7 connectivity, uh, which suits the way uh, vessels operate, of course. So you have your vessels operating in the middle of the oceans, round the clock, uh, relying on connectivity to safely and efficiently complete their routes. Uh, this brings up another important topic. Uh, there is no question that tech support is critical for maritime vessels. The vessels are reliant on their VSAT connectivity and becomes more and more so, but they are often short-staffed on the vessel in terms of IT resources. For example, managing their onboard data use can be a huge factor and the service providers are the one, the best service providers are the ones that can offer easy to use uh, network management tools. This means for the fleet operator or the ship captain, they can easily assign data allotments to the individual crew members, for example, and ensure that the bridge always has the vital connectivity it needs, regardless of, of the subscription chosen. Other types of technical support that are best that the best uh, maritime VSAT service provider offer include uh, application engineering, project management, installations of the antennas by certified technicians, creation of uh, vessel monitoring and notification systems, and of course, an ongoing 24-7 support whenever it's needed. 
Uh, from a point of view of, of simplifying the complex, uh, I'd like to spotlight uh, KVH's Agile plans. It's an all-inclusive, no-commitment service, um, which KVH pioneered the, the, the idea of, of connectivity as a service within the maritime industry when we introduced this in 2017. The service was highly innovative because it removed the barriers to adopting visa. For example, no CapEx investments were involved and no long-term contracts were needed. Uh, for one simple monthly fee, the vessel gets a KVH VSAT antenna installed at no charge. Well, for the installation, uh, they get a monthly airtime data plan, they get cybersecurity training, they get news and entertainment content, they have zero maintenance cost, and they have global technical support. Uh, Agile plans quickly became so successful that it's now representing more than 70% of KVH's commercial maritime VSAT shipments. Many fleet managers see Agile plans the way uh, that Nordic Hamburg's operations manager did when he said uh, in explaining his decision to outfit his 30 vessels with our visa, the fact that everything is included is the reason we choose KVH Agile plans. Connectivity, content, hardware, installation and maintenance all in one. Also a key deciding point or the fact that there's no commitment and no risk uh, of investment to the vessel owner. Uh, exactly, that, especially the last point was, was very important for a manager uh, like Nordic Hamburg. They did not want to be held to a contract which the owner uh, didn't want to provide back-to-back -back coverage for. So especially for ship management companies, Agile Plans has proven a very successful model because they can get in and out of contracts with no notice basically. Uh, with that, uh, I will actually conclude my presentation. If you are still using L-band technology and consider the adoption of VSAT technology, please feel free to contact me and uh, I will answer any questions you may have. Uh, I've provided the link here where you can easily schedule a meeting if you would like that. Uh, it's a uh, 15 minutes meetings you can slot, you, you can book. And I also provided a link here to connect uh, and download our ebook online. And I would like to ask at this time if there's any questions. Thank you. Thank you, David. Very, very interesting. Delighted to see that uh, VSAT uh, speeds are very much improved, increasing. Uh, are we anywhere close? to seeing shore side speeds of the satellite. What are the prospects in this respect, do you think? Well, unfortunately, I think we will continue to see VSAT uh, or, or vessel uh, connectivity speeds lag behind shore-based uh, shore communication. The, the quantum leaps we take on shore, uh, I recently had my, my ADSL connection exchange with a fiber link, so going from 40 megabits per second to, to 250 megabits per second for a family of, of four. Can, we, can you put on, we cannot see you, we can see the presentation, but we cannot see you, maybe. Oh, you want me to uh, stop sharing the presentation? Yeah, well, I mean, you would prefer to yeah. screen now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's great. Thank you. Lovely. Okay, so sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Yeah, I was trying to say that that I think uh, connectivity on vessels will continue to lag behind uh, home and, and land-based connectivity. Obviously, uh, I'm trying to give the example of my own home. Uh, 40 megabits were recently upgraded to 250 megabits per second for a family of four. Imagine that uh, on a vessel you have. Well, in, in best case, two to four megabits per second for a crew of 20 trying to run a business. Um, it will continue to lag behind and the gap may even widen, to be honest. Uh, we are seeing new services. We are seeing an increasing speeds, uh, but we are moving from yeah the Stone Age to the medieval times, maybe, if you compare to, to shore-based connectivity. Okay. Well, I might throw here, I have a son on board at the moment going south of uh, South Africa, and uh, indeed, uh, we get to see him every night on, on, on Messenger. It seems to be quite satisfactory, but we seem to lose him from time to time, so we'd be happy to see 
higher yeah. speeds and more bandwidth uh, down to the vessels. Things are definitely improving, and things like video chat, instant messaging, they are they are key uh, applications for, for crew. Uh, of course, you can't expect uh, 10, 10 crew members to be streaming Netflix videos at the same time uh, in the near future. Okay. Thank you, David. I don't see any more questions. Thank you for being a gold sponsor of the conference. And uh, we can release you now and move on to our last speaker for the morning session. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, David. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.